We all know the transformation that's going on. We've all been aware of AI out in the background. And from my perspective, you know, AI's time to deliver really is now. How do we apply AI and machine learning so that we can be in a position to optimize the power system and really think about the process of decarbonization and the operations of a decarbonized system in a way that we know that we'll achieve the outcomes we have to. It requires that the leaders of the organization really promote a culture of inclusion and innovation with really unrelenting focus. As we all look forward to a grid that's more functional and capable, but at the same time affordable. And I think when you look at the cost structure, that AI is gonna to have to play a key role in keeping prices down and also improving reliability. There is no other choice but to do AI and machine learning. The electric power sector is in the midst of two revolutions. It's the fourth industrial revolution and it's the energy transition. Utilities really need to step up the game in understanding what is possible with AI, where we can go, and what uh, education we need to provide our employees, um, and how to harvest this value. If you look at the way that different industries are leveraging AI to solve those problems, we're going to see very similar things with the increase in IoT and edge devices in the energy and electric utility space. The industry is ripe for disruption. The key is the software defined infrastructure. Once we disconnect hardware from the software, then possibilities are infinite. Once we do that, we're going to see a tremendous amount of capability start to spring up across the grid. So the guiding principles that we came up with were fairness, transparency, responsibility, governance, and accountability. Ethics and explainability in AI are not mutually exclusive. To be ethical, AI must also become explainable. When we're architecting a system, we also have to take a step backwards and say, Okay, what's the bias? Are we biased to a certain technology? You know, are we holding our ML techniques to a higher standard than we hold our humans? And I think, especially with auto ML, I think we almost have to. No one person or no one body has all the right answers. So it's important to have a dialogue. It's important to exchange ideas, best practices. Our research has identified that there is uh, potentially gaps in availability and accessibility of energy data across the energy system and this can limit innovation. If they could only combine data sets with other organizations, they could derive so many more insights. I think what we, we try to do with the ones that do share is to create the use cases and show that value. And then I think by doing that, you can hopefully get more people on the boat with you and, and move along. Think of the entire experience, the people, the process and technology, not just the one element of the solution that you have developed. And the better you are at causing less disruption with the people and process, the higher likelihood you have of getting to production. Just imagine the future as we go forward of those different distributed resources, electric vehicles discharging into the grid and all those different activities. I, for one, cannot see a way that we can manage the grid without application of AI to help those decisions. These people who are really succeeding in utilities, in oil and gas, in aerospace, in manufacturing, have great leaders that really understand change management and understand the fundamental culture of the company and who we are and what we do. AI will be the technology that enables utilities and oil and gas companies to deliver cleaner, safer, more renewable energy at lower cost into the hands of more satisfied consumers. There's no individual can do this. The whole industry has to work together to collaborate and actually get this across the line.